Welcome in, everybody. It's Dr. Living Good. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for tuning in. And this is going to be one to share, I believe. So you guys ready? Should we dive into this? Hot topic for the week. I like to come to these sometimes on Monday mornings just to get your eyes open, to be protective, to be proactive when it comes to your health. So let's do this. Lab grown meat. Meat growing in a lab coming to your plate soon. It's happening. It is literally happening. Approved just recently by the FDA. What are my initial reactions to this? What does some of the research show? which I'm gonna show you in a little bit here, some of the concerns with the summary of how this was made and what it means. Well, Good Meat, a division of Eat Just Inc. announced that it has received approval from the USDA for its first poultry product called Cultivated Chicken. It is grown directly from animal cells in what looks like a giant brewery container and it creates chicken. That's the solution because what we're finding is the world wants to be pro-environment. There is an agenda against greenhouse gases and I don't know where you stand on that, right? I'm not swinging either direction. The production, the overproduction of meat, the, you know, the, the care of meat and humane, the toxicity of it. Their solution to that is, well, let's save on the greenhouse gases. Let's remove those emissions. Let's culture the cells. Let's alter how the cells proliferate, how they multiply and grow chicken in a bin, that's what's coming. So I'm gonna walk through this process and some of the concerns that I have with it, but just some of the announcements with this announcement that we are now able to produce and sell cultivated meat in the United States is a major moment for our company, the industry and the food system. Uh, this is the CEO of Good Meat. And this was announced, Time Magazine, multiple sources in the last couple of weeks have released this. Now Singapore back in 2020 became the first company to allow commercial sales of cultivated meat. So this has been going on for three years in Singapore, right? Like mystery meat Singapore. Careful, we really don't know what it is and it's grown in a lab, right? So the USDA finally cleared it and two companies have been approved. Upside, their food cultivating chicken, and there's hundreds of companies that are going after this. They can produce about 50,000 pounds of meat per year and they wanna expand past chicken, they wanna to go to your burger, they wanna to go to all types of meats, right? Your hot dog is already probably somewhere close to that anyway, right? But they just grow it in these giant steel tanks that resemble a brewery. That's what the factory looks like. And they've used the scientists to figure out, they extract cells, right, with a needle in a biopsy of meat, and then they already have the cells. So now they don't have to like continue to go back to the cow or go back to the chicken and get the cells out. But they take the cells out, right, done at the biopsy, and then food scientists is what they're called. They don't have to go back to it because now they can just grow their own cells. They can grow their own chicken parts, right? And then inside the stainless steel tank, the cells are then fed a mix of some of the same nutrients that animals would be fed and they start to grow and they combine it with fats. They need to give them sugars. They need to give them amino acids. They need to give them vitamins. They need to figure out what needs to be added to that thing and then allows the cells to proliferate, to multiply, to grow. And it forms into meat. It takes about two weeks to reach a harvestable size. You're growing meat. Do you see why companies are interested in this? The process of taking a chicken or a cow and feeding them, managing them, taking care of them all the way to this point. And then you're, they're just like, let's just grow it, you know, in two weeks. But my job is to expose some of the downsides of on the surface. Sometimes you're like, well, yeah, we're fixing maybe some environmental factors, right? We're fixing uh, maybe the need or the time or the effort that it takes. Is this an alternative? We're about to see. So more than a hundred companies, by the way, are working on various iterations of cultivating meat just like this. Lab grown beef, 3D printed steaks, seafood, and they're even doing it for like our pets, cultivated treats for our pets. So they're rolling this out in a Michelin star restaurant. So this is some smart marketing. They're going to go to the top, some of the top chefs, uh, one of them being Dominique Kren, who will be serving the upside chicken at the restaurant in San Francisco. So it's a Michelin star, very high rated San Francisco restaurant is now going to incorporate that in. The reason being is because they can't keep up with the production of it and it's very expensive right now because you have to buy it in tens of thousands of pounds units in order to get it because the supply chain and demand isn't there yet because it's such new technology. So they're gonna start it in a five star and then their job is to make it taste just like chicken, right? So people would be enticed to try to taste just like the same taste is where they need to make sure they win now, right? So here's some of the problems with it. You're altering the DNA of food. Whenever we're altering DNA, you can just equate that with bad idea because you can't control nature. You can't control how God grows cells. 
Like what's next? We're gonna grow human beings, okay? I understand the environmental impact or the, some of the intentions behind the company. I'm not calling them all, all bad, but we are using genetically engineered cells. You're altering the DNA to promote the continuous growth of that. What that means is you're basically putting the cell in a state of cancer, right? What is cancer? Really simply a cell that doesn't die, right? It's an abnormal cell that doesn't die. It just keeps proliferating and growing when a normal cell would have a cycle and it would die off depending on where it is in the body. Each cell lives a little bit longer, skin cells 14 days, right? Your stomach's more like six months, but a tumor cell, right, just keeps growing, proliferating. That's the state you're putting these cells in, right? I'm not saying you're growing cancer cells, but it's resembling that and you're manipulating them. When you put that into your body, it has the propensity to create cancerous-like scenarios because you're ingesting those types of cells in. This is the problem with it. So it's not mine, right? We've been doing this with cell cultures and with drugs for quite some time. And cancer causing genes in food production goes to a whole nother level, let alone we've been injecting this, we're messing with RNA, we're messing with DNA, right, for these materials. So the gene editing can bring up unintended DNA consequences because you're, you're trying to clip part of the DNA off and replace it with something else. Like mistakes can be made there or things that were not foreseen. And we haven't seen this in human beings of like when you eat a bunch of this, what does it do? Like we're completely disregarding all of that. They're just looking at, okay, is it like sanitary enough to put in someone's mouth? But we've skipped what is the long-term issues with eating a lot of this. That's the scary part of it. And there has been reports like when you start to edit the DNA of rice. This was actually done in the Journal of Genetics and Genomics in 2020. And they looked at gene editing in rice. And then what were the intended or undesirable consequences long term? And it was mutations that started to create cancer-like DNA mutations longer term. So we've studied this in rice a little bit. There's no definitive human studies. Of like you, you, you feed them this, you get this. That's a very hard and long study to do. To go to market, these companies are not gonna wait for that just like a drug company would. Now, what are some of the issues with it? Well, during the process, of making this, check out the sheet again, they identified all the potential issues. So from cell isolation, right? The source, the species, the bacteria, funguses, viruses, parasites, everything that comes along with that. So now you gotta pump in antibiotics to keep those at bay. There's contaminants that can get involved. There's reagents that have to be added in. Just the environment of the facility, where are we growing this at? What is that bin that we're growing it in, right? Then the establishment of the actual lines of the cells, the genetic testing, the programming, how we clip it, what things we can't see, immortalization of it, right? So if it continues to grow unmonitored like a cancer cell, contamination again, animal derived reagents, what was in the animal to begin with, right? Then we keep going. So then there's establishment of the cell lines, the establishment of the MCB, the establishment of, or the proliferation phase when you're growing it, is there contamination during transfer? The, the Look at all of these issues that come up. So they just had to prove that this is safe enough so the FDA could do it, proliferation phase, their fermentation phase, the harvest of the cell materials. Again, every one of these has, you know, contamination with toxic metals, the antibiotics, the, the bacteria, the viruses. So these are going to be heavily treated with antibiotics and chemicals that keep them from creating infections because it doesn't come with an immune system. It doesn't come with an animal that's hosting the real meat that serves a purpose. You're just growing it in a container. It doesn't have any of those other factors. So a lot of chemicals have to be used in it. That's the concern I have with it. Second main concern is you're putting altered DNA in your body. If you alter DNA and you put it in you, what does it do to your DNA? I don't know if I want to stick around for that. You know, when 60, in the 1960s, when doctors were recommending their favorite kind of cigarette, that idea. Now the FDA is recommending, you know, or, or people like Bill Gates, who's an early investor in this, are recommending this alternative meat to be eaten to help with, you know, maybe countries that don't have as much meat or to cut down on greenhouse gases and things of that nature. It is very energy intensive to do this type of work of extracting, brewing. You're still getting a lot of environmental impact. So I think that picture is probably being a little bit overpainted and we're underestimating what is the human impact long-term. So whenever I see this kind of stuff, 
I get sort of a red flag, but probably not gonna see it in your grocery store anytime soon because of the expense of it. But over the next five years, now they're gonna to go to work on lowering the overhead, which means cheaper material, higher productions, you know, which means less quality, and it's just going to continue to erode away. And as soon as it hits that point where it is cheaper than regular chicken, you're gonna start seeing it show up in your grocery stores, and I think you're gonna see it start to show up in your fast foods. And you're gonna use this cheaper, lower overhead solution that's still chicken and can be labeled as chicken, and they'll put this into your food, put this into you. What's the long-term DNA impact? So I love science, I love advancement of the human species. I just get very leery when we are messing with God's design and the balance of nature that needs to be involved here. So I'm gonna stick with real meat. There is a big difference in clean meat and real meat. So I went to the grocery store and I filmed a video to help you through that. You can go shopping with me, I think it's a great resource next. If it grosses you out that this is lab-grown meat, you are not alone. 72% of even Gen Zers, young 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 25-year-olds are like, I don't want anything to do with this. So, you know, So progressive minds are even like, that's kind of gross. I hope we kind of stay there, but we do need to up the value of what we are eating when it comes to meat and avoiding meat and trying to go a soy-based one, a fake one, can be a really toxic idea and so can lab-grown. So next video up, check this one out. Go shopping with me and be leery of lab-grown meat. There you go, peeps. Well, got exposed some of this stuff to you. If you've seen the packaging, seen some of the advertisements of it, FDA just approved it. And I want to jump all over those things and just let you know to be you know, lab-grown meat, what it may be showing up as, you know, over the next five years as you can kind of get in front of some of these cultivated meat is what you're going to want to watch out for. It seems to be the nicer way of saying this right now. So be on the lookout for it. Check out that video, post that one below for you if you want to go around shopping and learning some of that, but keeping you healthy, keeping it working with the body, not against it. That's my job. Make it a great week. If you need a place to start, there's a link for my book below. Uh, you can check that out as well and just start eating real food putting good stuff in your body. Watch what happens with your health when you do it. All right, you guys, God bless you. Make it a great week. You might as well. You're never going to get this one back. See you Wednesday for a live Q&A.